Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Josh Faith. I'm one of the regional directors for the Indiana Gear Up program. And thank you for joining us for this video tutorial on how to use live streaming in e-learning. Um, one of the things that we are figuring out during this trying time is that we need to probably engage in multiple avenues for e-learning to make things work at this point. So live streaming is one of those options that we can use. It tends to be something that people are not as familiar with. So we're just gonna go through a couple ways to do it. This video is gonna be part one. It's gonna be the very simple, low effort, easy to do things. Part two will be a little more involved and it will leverage some of the software we've talked about in our other videos. So we'll go ahead and get started. So let's start with why would you wanna live stream? Okay, first is real-time interaction. As an educator, I know that one of the tools that I use the most in the classroom is interacting with students in real time and talking to them and understanding what they understand. And really, that in and of itself is a type of formative assessment. And I think that's one of the things that we're going to find is a little lacking during the e-learning phase of our careers right now, that if we can engage them one-to-one -one or in a group-to-one in real time, that's going to help us do a lot with formative assessment. Okay, the next thing is accountability. If your students have to be in a certain place at a certain time, much like they would in a classroom, that's gonna give you an advantage. Um, accountability is one of those things with online learning that eh, they may do it, they may do it at a different time than normal, where it may not be optimal. At least when uh, during a live stream, you know the students that are there and you can monitor their learning. Now, live streaming doesn't mean that you can't do this asynchronously. Most live streaming, platforms let you record your sessions. So that would also work for students who can't be there in real time. And probably the most important to me is that it helps maintain contact and relationships with students. Um, while we're in a period of physical distancing, we don't want to let that become social. Uh, we want our students to know that we're still there for them, we still worry about their learning, and we're still here to help them. And being able to talk to them in real time uh, whether in most cases during a live stream through chat, um, that lets them know that everything's okay. And it's, it's sort of an emotional attachment that we have with our students and to maintain that is important. Okay. So how do you live stream to students? This is going to be different depending on where you're at. Um, we're going to, in these videos, kind of go with a base level that could work at multiple places. But really, the first thing I would tell you is if you have tools that your district uses, use those. Um, things like Skype, things like Jitsi, things like Zoom. Um, these platforms are gonna have way more features than anything we're gonna show you. Um, the things I'm gonna show you are free. Um, there's something that you don't have to spend any money on, things you can just use and are widely usable with most LMS systems that schools are using. Um, but if you do have a platform that you are using in the schools, it's best to use that. Um, that will give you the most bang for your buck. Okay, and live streaming kind of has a continuum. You can go with the most simplest option all the way up to the most complex option. Like I said, this first video, that's gonna focus mainly on the simple part. Everything we go we're gonna do in this video is going to be very, very, very simple. Um, the next video is going to move into that more complex, and that's going to give you more of the features that a tool that your school district may be using um, would have built in that you're going to have to come up with on your own. Okay, and the platform that we're going to focus on specifically in these videos is YouTube, and there's there's a few reasons for that. One, it tends to be the thing that is most universal. When you look at LMS systems, it tends to be the thing that most platforms support. Um, and it's thing, something that kids are used to using anyways. It's it's not foreign to them. They, they understand how YouTube works, I guarantee it. Um, so that's where we're gonna start, is with that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start here on the Indiana Gear Up YouTube page. Now, before we even start dealing with the website, I wanna bring up something that's probably the simplest of all of the things you can do to live stream. One is to use a mobile device, whether that be a phone or a tablet, whether it be Android or iOS. Both have YouTube live streaming apps that you can use. Um, this is probably the most low effort thing you could do possible. You just load it onto your phone, you hold your phone up just like you're doing a, a video chat like a FaceTime or something, and you can stream that directly to your students. That's probably the easiest. Now, there is one sort of caveat to all of YouTube streaming. When you first go to do a live stream, you're not gonna be able to. There is a 24 hour lead time where 
YouTube has to approve you to be a live streamer. So if this is something you want to do, you need to back up your plans at least 24 hours to go ahead and get that available to you, whether that be on the mobile device or whether that be through the website. Once you have that done, you're able to live stream as much as you want. There's not really any uh, restrictions past that point. Okay, so let's say that we're not going to use our phone. Let's we're going to use a webcam, and you know whether that webcam has a microphone built into it, or you're fancy like me and you have a separate separate microphone that you can use. Um, either way, those are both going to be piped into my computer. So when I go to the website here. Uh, you can see up in, let me grab a mouse here. You can see up here in the corner, that's going to be your account. Uh, you do need a YouTube account. If you do not have one, that's fairly easy to set up. If you have a Gmail, you just you can use that same account. Um, and so you will have your logo there. And then if you go over a little bit, you'll see this camera. And that camera has a plus sign. This is how you're going to add videos or live stream. So when I click on this, I have two options. I have upload video or go live. And so... I'm going to hit go live and that is going to change what happens here. And let me make another change here. Cause I do not like the black bar, <laughs> the white bars on the top and bottom. There we go. We'll change that to make that look a little better. Now you will see right now that it has a prompt to access my camera and my microphone that's going to happen on any web browser you're on so you'll have to in your individual web browser allow that and so we'll do this allow oh something went wrong because i'm trying to use the same camera that i'm using to <laughs> do this presentation so here's what we'll do we will i'm going to change it to this okay now, I set it to a camera that doesn't really exist, so it's going to be black, but you'll get the idea of what's happening. So from here, you're going to create a title, whatever you want the title of the live stream to be. Right now, I'm going to call this test because we're just going to run a test with it. Um, you would name that whatever you want your students to see. Then from here, you get to choose how, what level it's available at. Publicly means anybody can join your live stream. Uh, you could do that if you wanted. Unlisted means that you have a link and that you could send that link to your students and only they only people with the link would be able to join the live stream. And that is probably what you're going to want most of the time. And then private, which means that nobody's going to see it. And you just recorded something for yourself. <laughs> probably not what you want. So unlisted is probably the thing we're going to use the most. Now you can do scheduling. You can hit this little button here and it's going to give you some options for scheduling uh, your live stream. So if you knew ahead of time, like on, on Thursday, I'm going to live stream and my kids know that you could set it up to where that live stream starts at that time. Uh, if not, if you don't do a schedule, whenever you hit the go live, you go live. Okay. And from here, you've got a couple options. Now I will tell you right now that these options are not great. Uh, no matter what you pick, you're probably not going to be happy. So <laughs> just kind of know that going in, it's not, uh, probably the, the simplest thing in the world. Uh, right here, your audience. Because of a law that was just enacted fairly recently called COP, uh, COPA, you are going to have to say right up front whether this is for kids or it's not. Ideally, this is for kids. Um, that is going to create some problems for us down the line. So I would pick yes, it's for kids. The thing that you lose is live chat. Um, a lot of the interaction that you would get for live chat is going to be very beneficial. Uh, since you're not going to have that, you will have to find a chat solution somewhere else to bring into this or something for you to watch. Whether that be you take emails during that time or you set up a remind to where the kids have a number to text you that's not your text number or your normal phone number to where you can interact with them that way. Those are all good. Or if you use an LMS system like Google Classroom or uh, Canvas, maybe you set up a chat in there and the kids can interact with you through that. Um, you do lose the live YouTube chat if you ch choose for kids. The benefit is most of our students are not adults and they don't have adult accounts. So that's probably what we're going to want. Um, because if you choose this for adults, anybody who has an account that is not an adult account cannot access it. So setting it as a Yes, this is for kids is probably the most beneficial, but you do have to kind of sort out how you're going to do chat on the other end. Um, and there, like I said, there's multiple ways to do it. If you have questions about that, please feel free to contact us at Indiana Gear Up and we can get you set up on something to where you can add that chat in later. Okay. Um, you can do more with age restriction. 
typically, if you set it for kids, there's not going to be an age restriction that you have to use. And then there's more options. The more options is let you add a description to your stream. So if you're talking about, uh, let's just say quadratic equation, you could say lecture on quadratic equation. Uh, you set your camera and your microphone, which you've already done, but this gives you a chance to maybe change that if you want to. And there's even more advanced settings about allowing chat and uh having commercials in there you probably aren't going to have any commercials in there and if you've set it to be a kids live stream there is not going to be any chat and you can't you can't enable it here which would be nice if there was a way to kind of backdoor that but you can't um it's set to where it is what it is okay so we'll go back and once all of this is set up you just hit next You'll smile for a thumbnail. If the camera was working, I could take a thumbnail and pick what that's going to be. Right now, it's just going to give me a black screen because that's what I fed it. Um, you can retake it. You can upload a custom thumbnail. I would tend to do the custom thumbnail. Uh, one thing you'll learn dealing with any kind of video is wherever you pause a video where you're talking naturally, you wind up with a silly face. You'll be like, or something like that. You don't want that to be your thumbnail. So maybe make a thumbnail or take a picture of yourself and upload that. And that it tends to make it be, go a little smoother to have that. Okay. So I have all this stuff here. Yours will be slightly different depending on how you set it. And then I hit go live. And once I do that, it takes a second. And now I'm live. Everything that I would be doing on the camera and my audio, that is streaming out to the internet. Um, and if the students have the link to it or they are subscribed to your channel, they will all automatically get this. Um, and I can do all sorts of things down here. Obviously, we've got our audio coming in. And then whenever I'm done, I can hit end stream. Yes, I'm sure I want to end because nobody wants to stare at a black screen. And then it's going to give me all sorts of information about the stream. Uh, some of this is going to be helpful. Some of it's not just because we're using it sort of outside of what it's typically used for. But you can kind of get an idea of how many people were there and things like that. Then we're going to hit edit in studio. Now we're going to go back to the white screen. So let me change my color bars here because there we go looks a lot better. Okay, so from here, I can basically change a lot of the same things that I changed before, uh, because this is about the video recording that we made. It's not uh, the stream anymore. This is just a recording of the stream. So I could change the title, I can change the description, I can pick another thumbnail, or I can use the thumbnail that I've already uh, chosen from before. You've got things like your age restrictions and things, and tags. Tags are really important. If you make this public, uh, if you're doing a lecture on a certain thing that maybe lots of people in your discipline are going to use, you can actually make this public and that will help uh, people find things. But the way you do that is through tags. So let's say I'm an integrated chemistry and physics teacher and I was talking about the formula for velocity. I could put in my tags velocity and then anybody who searches for that could find that. So if, if you're willing to make this stuff available, available publicly, that will give people a way to find it in search. Okay, and then once you do that, you can save it and then that, gets uploaded to your account just as a normal video that anybody can go back and watch. So if you have students that aren't available during the time you live stream, they still can get access to the video. They can still go back and watch it. You're not getting that engagement that you were getting during a live stream, but it still gives them access to the information. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Okay, you would save that if you want to keep it. I don't because nobody wants to watch a video of me talking into a black screen. So we'll hit delete. And um, if you do decide to delete, this is what you're going to find out. Uh, you have to click that you understand that this goes away forever. There's no way to get it back once you've deleted it. So I'll hit delete forever. And that will go away. And so while we're here on this main screen, I am going to do a little promotion for Indiana Gear Up. Uh, the Indiana Gear Up YouTube channel has lots of resources uh, that you can use uh, to help you during sort of this e-learning transition period that we're in. Um, as always, with anything, if you could use any of our help, you can definitely contact us at indianagearup at purdue.edu, and we will help you in any way we can. So I hope this was helpful, and I will see you guys next time.